this is the new way that you're going to have an eye test in the future. So what we're going to do, I'm going to talk us through the presentation while um, Priyanka uh, demonstrates the actual video, because it's in a headset, it's in a virtual reality headset too, we're judges. And a willing volunteer. <laughs> So, I think most people were here yesterday, so just to recap and the reasons why we needed a virtual reality um, headset in order to measure vision is because if you get your visual field, which is your peripheral vision, a very important aspect of vision for driving, if you have this tested at the moment, who, who recognises one of these machines? Yeah. Who fell asleep while they were doing it? Yeah. Um, really boring. If you've got a wheelchair, you can't do it properly. If you um, are a, a child or you've got um, uh, problems kind of with mobility, or even if you're an inpatient in the hospital, again, you can't take this to the side of the bed. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a bit scary for children too. Um, so what we are hoping to achieve this weekend is to simulate a driving vision to start off with in an environment which is realistic <laughs> and scientific. <laughs> Um, and at the moment, if we skip back to that picture, that's not a road. There is not a picture of the road in there. And because of that, um, it's not very realistic at all. Uh, although it does allow us to measure stuff scientifically, it cannot currently be reprogrammed. So we wanted to do a device that would allow us to do this. Uh, so Oculus Rift has been uh, allowed out recently for developers and for researchers. Um, and so we've got a virtual world in here. What we had to do, uh, the machine is 30 centimetres away from the patient's eye. So as a vision scientist, I was able to calibrate the distances um, of the two millimetre dot to something which is projected at 50 metres away um, as well. So that's why we said, why would we use spots when we can use zombies instead? And you kill them during your eye test. This is, currently, um, how we, this is currently how we show visual fields, this is how it's displayed. Again, we've simplified this, seen and unseen, exactly like it's done. We have developed our own version of output for measuring this, That's and these are the uses. Okay. Right. <laughs> so this can be used for the DPLA by the bedside and as a new research platform. <laughs> so, okay. so you've got um, each eye seeing a different um, image and the zombies coming to the front of these. The up in the end. Alright, so those zombies are placed in a particular degree um, in your visual field and the charts whether you see it or not. We made it really short to fit into the two and a half minutes. <laughs> to check what part of their visual field may or may not be affected out of which corners, we can do it this way. So the beautiful thing about this is, is that we can give it an output of data as opposed to being on a ward where you just do a bit of fingers waving around. This is very mobile and if you take them to the wards, you can take them up to the GP practice. Take them to the patient's home and someone you're querying with TIA, TIA or a stroke or something like that, so you've, you've got a really? hard clinical sign. Great. John? John? Oh, sorry, okay. how, would you, how would you calibrate it? How would you check that it's actually revealing the same evidence that the old way does? Yeah, well, first of all, it's been scientifically calibrated, you know, with regard to the distance it is projected to in the distance of our machine. Um, but if you wanted to use this um, sort of clinically, you would just run it through like a post-calibration test with real patients. Yeah. David? Do you need to go through any regulatory process for it to be adopted, or could you and your colleagues start using it? 
Yeah, it's a DPL ace, so then wanted to use it. Then we just put in more zombies, and you could, again, you probably do your post calibration just to make sure the patients with the defects on the machine showed the same ones with ours. Um, but yeah, more zombies, if the DBLA, they've had their for 35 years. Can you move away from that perspective oh, as, a, as a medical device? Would there be any recommendation as well? Is that the question? How could you ensure that a process that's been used successfully or boringly for several years is now changed to this? Well, it's translate across well because the size of the zombies and the, the, the place the zombies are presented correlates directly with the DBLA, um, the DBLA legislation at present. So the, the size and placement in the same scientific 